beer. There's quite a few breweries doing some wood aging in the United States right now. Most of them are just using used bourbon barrels. We decided we didn't like that particular flavor profile and we wanted to just get the flavor from good old raw wood. From the standpoint of the lumber, the oak looks completely different. You put it up to your nose, it doesn't have any distinct aroma. Oak also has a low resin content, and uh, by comparison, the Palo Santo has a high resin content, it's a very aromatic wood. Um, and in addition, uh, the aroma, the, uh, the flavor that you get off of this wood over the course of time doesn't really wash out. The one difference that we're really doing here at Dogfish Head is we are not putting any kind of lining on the inside of the tanks. Uh, traditionally, brewers would have lined a tank with a, a substance called pitch, and that was a, a, like a, a pine resin material to prevent any flavor impact from the wood getting into the beer. Uh, we want to actually pick up some flavor from the wood, and that's the whole idea behind this program that we're, we're embarking upon. So it's a little different. It's kind of uh, actually blending beer making and wine making and we like to blur the distinctions between beer and wine here because we feel that beer has an important place on the dinner table right there with wine uh, on the on the table of american consumers so that's kind of what we're all about here it's never really been used for aging beer before but we've uh, we've latched onto this stuff and are leading the way to show the world what this particular exotic hardwood can do for beer it's kind of hard to describe you just have to try the beer and find out I'm Bill Ware from Arrow Tank Company in Buffalo, New York. Uh, I'm down here in Milton, Delaware. Put together some uh, beer tanks at Dogfish Brewery. Arrow Tank was started by a gentleman by the name of Art File in uh, 1937. My father got involved in the business. He was actually working as a consultant to sell the business for the owner. And after having several people come in and look at it, my father decided it was something he was interested in and decided to purchase the company himself. If you were to ever get to our shop in Buffalo, New York, and you came inside, you'd think you stepped back in time probably 40 or 50 years as nothing has really changed much in the industry since then. Uh, technology doesn't really help us much. Everything is still done the same way that it was done 40 or 50 years ago. The same craftsmanship, the machinery hasn't changed, and really laying things out hasn't changed. These tanks for dogfish are, are the largest beverage tanks that I recall doing as long as I've been making tanks. So it's about two to three times what it would cost to do a comparable size oak tank we're putting into Palo Santo tanks. Palo Santo tanks, just for two of them fully installed, it's probably running around $140,000, $150,000. On small volumes, hard to capture that uh, cost back. There's a common practice in winemaking called dropping fruit. Uh, whereby uh, the winemakers uh, go to the vines and they cut away and drop off some clusters of the grapes to uh, focus and intensify the sugars and complexity within the remaining clusters of grapes. And so it's obviously, you know, a, a sacrifice of, of quantity for quality uh, when they do this practice. And at Dogfish Head, we kind of embrace a similar uh, practice, call it uh, dropping water, uh, if you will, uh, where, you know, basically the, the average big industrial brewery uses about 20 pounds of barley for every barrel of beer that they brew, and the average craft brewery uses about 40 pounds of barley for every beer that they brew. At Dogfish Head, the average barrel of beer that we make here uses about 70 pounds of barley uh, per barrel. And in the case of Palo Santo, we use 92 pounds of barley in every barrel of this beer that we brew. Um, so it's a tremendous investment, and what you're basically doing is cutting away water and leaving a higher volume of sugars from the barley, flavors from the barley in the beer before you even begin fermenting it, which is going to lead to more complexity, more body, more food compatibility, uh, more ageability for that beer. Um, and it's, a, it's a, a sacrifice and efficiency that we're really happy to make uh, once we get to sit around and, and enjoy these beers uh, with dinner and, and just with friends. Beyond the cost of the tanks themselves, you also have the fact that Palo Santo is lumped in with our higher, uh, higher end of our portfolio, which is longer lead times in the tanks. So there's an opportunity cost associated with Palo Santo that you don't find on a 60-minute Indian Raison, or even 90 for that matter, which are more three or four week beers as opposed to the eight week beer end of the spectrum. Uh, we're tying up the use of stainless for primary fermentation and wood 
for the aging purposes. So you have racking issues, mo meaning moving beer between tanks. Every time you move a beer, there's a potential for loss. The Palo Santo, like previous experiments that have succeeded for us, like 120 and Worldwide Stout and Burton and Old School and Immort, they all tell a unique story at Dogfish. It's at a it's at a time at Dogfish, it might have been during an expansion period, it might have been during a move from the restaurant to our first brewery, the first brewery to the second brewery, or throughout the various expansion plans. So it's almost like the rings of a tree. Each brand to us internally uh, tells a new story at the stage of the life we were in at that time. And Palo Santo for us is a continuation of that uh, ring on the tree. We use uh, uh, non-traditional ingredients, uh, exotic sugars, spices, flowers, uh, anything that we think is going to make beer more unique and uh, more interesting for people to try. Another unique ingredient that we're uh, using in this beer is uh, called sucanet, which is uh, short for sugar cane natural, uh, which is a very rich tasting brown sugar. Rather than being refined sugar with molasses added back to it, this is basically dehydrated uh, sugar, liquid sugar cane, um, so it retains all of its raw, natural molasses flavor that it originally had, so it doesn't really lose any of that through over-processing, and um, it just delivers a really rich, um, well, molasses note to the, uh, to the beer that you really can't get from any other, uh, any other source. There are some challenges in making strong beers. One is uh, the yeast itself doesn't like to ferment to a very high alcohol level, it tends to kill itself off. So we've done a lot of work here with different types of yeast and different ways to keep the yeast working. Uh, and then obviously the aging process. Uh, these beers will sit in this wood for several weeks to several months. Wood actually, it's a, it's a flavor that changes at, over the lifespan of the beer itself. So when we're brewing a, a really big beer like Palo Santo, for example, at, at uh, you know, 11 or 12 percent alcohol, and we're aging this in, in, in wooden tanks, that beer is going to change over the, the several years of shelf life that, that a beer like that is going to have. It's a very, uh, it's got a lot of fortitude, that beer. It's going to um, taste completely different right off the line at six months, at a year, at two years, at three years, you know, uh, like wines that are aged on wood. The complexity is going to increase as the age of that beer increases. And right. This one's first of all, I think this one's like eight months old. Does anyone know? This sure. was the second of the two test batches that we did down there. So this is the one that Jesse did the wood for, right? Um, so the volume of wood was the same as the first batch, but I think this beer sat on the wood for longer than with the first batch. Okay. Every bit that goes into this beer should be unique to that beer itself. Yeast so, included. Yeast included. I mean. The tanks are unique, the sugar is unique, um, the recipe is unique, the yeast should also be unique. You're so, unique. Um, well, that goes without saying. <laughs> we have a, uh, an inspection program where we, we package and, and inspect all the packaging rather out here. We have a sensory program here and we have a microbiological program. Uh, we don't pasteurize anything here at Dogfish Head Craft Brewing. So it's very important that we know microbiologically what's in our beer at every step of the process. What we've got is a very, very heavy brown ale. It's made with, like we talked about, pale malt, a caramel malt, wheat, chocolate malt, and black patent malt. Gives it that roasty uh, aroma and flavor. Then the wood's added. You can see it's got a nice mocha-like uh, head on it. Um, this beer seems to be getting better and better with time because of that high alcohol content. So we're looking at a very, very smooth flavor, very creamy. A lot of texture to it, and then that flavor of the wood intermingling with those roasted malts and that thickness of that beer, it's absolutely delicious. You could fast forward a couple of weeks now, and now I'm getting married. And uh, what do I request to do the toast with at our wedding? The 120 minute IPA that Sam had given me um, in exchange for the Palo Santo wood. We have three related goals at our brewery, uh, continually ratcheting up the quality and consistencies of the beers that we make. Uh, brewing only unique beers that aren't derivative of something that, that already exists in the marketplace and continuing to explore, you know, to, to push ourselves and to push out the boundaries of what great beer can be.
Brewing for us is really an artful process, you know, rather than a, a means to the end. I hope this film will give beer lovers a glimpse of this process and that our passion and skill and obsession with making really special beer can be seen at the same time that it can be tasted. Again, it's something that we're, we think is, is worth taking the time uh, to do right uh, because it's a beer that we think is going to be like nothing that's ever been, been seen out there before. Take time, take time, take time.